What's up, guys? Welcome to Jew Whiskey. I'm Jeff, and today we're going to be doing a review of Booker's Bourbon. Stick around. Okay, so we're reviewing a bourbon today. Bourbon is something that I've been getting more and more into recently, uh, which is to say out of the 100 or so bottles that I currently have open, two of them are bourbons. So a lot. Now, I do like bourbon, but obviously this is a Scotch-focused channel. So if you ask me what's most important to me, like what's my top priority in life, number one, of course, is going to be Scotch. Number two, probably I'd say is brandy. Number three, my girlfriend. And then number four, bourbon. So it's not my favorite alternative, but I do like it. And as I said, it's growing on me more and more which is why I picked up this Booker's a while back. Now, this is a whiskey I've had before, but it's been a really long time. It's been more than a decade since my last bottle, so good time to come back to it. Booker's is part of the Jim Beam family. It got started back in 1988. It's a cast strength expression, and this is one of those bourbons that's very prone to batch hype. So there's guys out there that follow like every batch, and some get really hyped up and people rush to buy them. Uh, but honestly, I, I don't know much about that. For reference, my batch code is 202401E, which does not correspond to any stateside batches. Uh, I showed this to my buddy in the States. He's a bit of a bourbon guy, and he surmised that the E at the end probably stands for export. So if you're a batch hunter in the States, I'm not sure how useful this particular review will be for you. However, this bottle may have a resemblance to the Springfield batch, which was the first batch of 2024 released in the United States, and apparently that is one of the more popular ones. I don't think it would be identical though. Uh, the Springfield batch is 62.25% ABV. It's seven years, seven months, and eight days old. This one here is 62.2%. It's seven years, one month, and 12 days old, so six months younger. Uh, obviously, I don't have the Springfield batch. I can't compare them, and I'm just speculating to say that they're similar at all. So, you know what? Never mind that. What I can tell you is this batch consists of five whiskeys of different ages from four aging warehouses, and that's all the technical stuff I can tell you. Uh, bourbon's not really my wheelhouse, so I don't really have a deep understanding of the technical side of bourbon. I guess I should. All I know is that for me, it's really fun coming back to a nice cast strength bourbon from time to time, and the fact that I enjoyed this the last time I had it, which again was a very long time ago, hopes are high that this will go well this time around. So let's not waste any more time. Let's jump into our review. In the meantime, if you'll kindly leave a like down below, that'd be greatly appreciated. For specs, this one comes in at 62.2% ABV, as I mentioned earlier, so it's definitely a punchy whiskey. Uh, it is uncut and unfiltered, according to the website, and bourbon never allows you to add color. So, uh, actually, you know what? These boxes, they're for scotch. I don't think they really apply to bourbon. So that's actually a good question for the bourbon guys out there. What boxes or quality markers do you think I should include if I make like a bourbon equivalent of this little checklist here? Like, what are some of the most relevant things that bourbon drinkers would want to know about? In terms of presentation, I do think this is a good looking bottle. It's got like a cowboy thing going on. I wouldn't be my favorite choice of font, but I guess that's a pretty petty, pretty small gripe. Overall, I do think it's got a good aesthetic. We'll give it four out of five. We do get good information on the label. It gives us the age, it gives us the batch code. And actually, if you go to the website, it gives you a breakdown of each of the individual batches, not the export batches, but if you're in the States, those batches will be on the website. Now, the website doesn't give you loads of information, but it does tell you like tasting notes and stuff like that. Uh, and overall, I'd say the brand does offer some pretty good transparency and the bottle looks cool. On the nose, this stuff goes pretty heavy on the cinnamon and the vanilla. It's like a boozy Cinnabon. This gives us lots of charred oak, charcoal, brown sugar, and I appear to have written pine cone in my tasting notes. Have I ever sniffed a pine cone? Yes. There's also some leather in here, some caramel, some pepper, and some vanilla incense, which I assume exists. Okay, yeah, it does. So the tasting note that I made up in my head is a real thing that I may or may not have smelled before. By the way, if anyone out there wants advice on how to extract tasting notes and nosing notes from your whiskey, um, you just kind of say stuff. On the palate and finish, this gives us a beautiful, full, thick, mouth-coating, oily texture. Uh, we get spices up front. This gives us cinnamon, nutmeg, pepper, anise. And then we move into stuff like uh, leather. There's a touch of tobacco in here. We get resin. We get a dark brown sugar caramel type thing, kind of like a Tootsie Roll. This gives us a long finish with baking spices, Christmas cake, and vanilla Coke. 
Uh, vanilla Coke, by the way, underappreciated. Everyone goes for regular Coke or cherry Coke. Vanilla Coke needs more love. Okay, so this is loads of fun. It's really satisfying. It's absolutely huge. That's what she said. If you want a really vibrant, punchy bourbon, this one's got you covered. Like this makes me want to go out and shoot a leather jacket and lasso a bald eagle. What? I think first and foremost, the reason a lot of people are enticed into buying this bourbon, of course it does enjoy a good reputation, but people want that high ABV. They want those cast strength, punchy bourbons and why wouldn't they? Those are great. Uh, but that's not all it's got going on for it. This actually does have some very nice flavors. And listen, I have complained in the past about the flavors that we get in bourbon, just in the sense that they can be very samey, a little bit too repetitive. And that's not true. It's a little bit true. But I am starting to appreciate the variety of flavors that we can get in bourbon. And speaking as someone with a grand total of two open bottles of bourbon on the go, I think it's safe to say that I am now one of the most sophisticated bourbon tasters on the internet. It's like a boozy Cinnabon. Vanilla Coke needs more love. Have I ever sniffed a pine cone? So what are my thoughts on this one? I think it's fantastic. It's very cinnamon forward. In fact, not just cinnamon, it's very spice forward. There's lots of cinnamon, nutmeg, anise, pepper. Uh, so loads of baking spices. And I also like that this is not too sweet. That's a problem with a lot of bourbons. This is not too syrupy, it's not cloying. Now we do get a pretty big hit of sweetness up front, but as we transition, as we move towards the finish, uh, we get these dark brown sugar, caramel notes, kind of like I mentioned Tootsie Rolls, almost like a resinous sweetness. And it's really, it's not too much, it's not too loud. Honestly, I think this is one of the stronger bourbons that I've tried, and I don't just mean the ABV. The spices, the restrained sweetness, the intensity, and even the complexity. This is a bourbon you could spend some time with. You can dig into it. So personally, I thoroughly enjoy this. I think it's a fantastic bourbon. I don't really have much in the way of notes or complaints, but I can imagine some people out there not getting along with this stuff. And that's because it is, as I said, a particularly spicy bourbon. So it does have some prickle and that's exacerbated by the very high ABV. So not necessarily for everyone. Obviously, I do like this one a lot. My score is going to be 88. I think it's one of the better bourbons out there that's widely available. And what's nice about this stuff is that it's not become ridiculous because this is a popular, well-respected, batch-produced, cast-strength bourbon. And some of those get kind of insane with like secondary markets and flippers and absurd prices. Uh, that, as far as I know, hasn't happened too much with bookers. I'm sure some batches go for more than others, and I'm sure there are flippers. But yeah, it's not ridiculous like it is with some other releases. Normal people can still find it. They can still enjoy it. So yeah, that's it. That's my thoughts. Really good stuff. Recommended. We are about to jump into value, but before we do that, I do want to say a quick thank you to all my channel members, all my patrons. Guys, thank you so much for the support. And if you want to help out, if you want to help keep the channel financially sustainable and independent, there are a number of ways that you can help. I have both Patreon and PayPal linked down below. Anything and everything helps, guys. And again, if you're already helping out, huge thank you. Genuinely appreciated. Now let's see about value. So value on this bottle is pretty good. I wouldn't say it's spectacular, but it's definitely solid enough. Thing is, here in Taiwan, we are one of the cheapest markets in the entire world for scotches, for single malts, but that's not the case for bourbons. Usually bourbon here is either on par or more expensive than what people are asked to pay in the United States. Uh, but luckily for this one, it's pretty much one to one. I think this goes for about a hundred bucks in the States and that's pretty much precisely what we're asked to pay here. Now I have seen it in the States on sale and I know it goes as low as like 75, 80 bucks at times, but I think generally speaking, it's closer to a hundred. Maybe I'm wrong. Either way, that's what I paid a hundred bucks. I do think it's worth it. Uh, I wouldn't come back to it too quickly. I wouldn't come back to it over and over again. I certainly wouldn't become like a batch hunter for this stuff, but definitely something I'd be happy to revisit down the line. Yeah, it's good and it's worth the money. Okay, that's it. That's all I've got for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, I want to hear from you. So have you tried the bookers? Have you tried different batches of bookers? Are there batches that are better than others? How much variety do we get between batches? Kind of curious about that. Are you a single malt guy? Have you tried bookers before? I don't know, man. Just put stuff in the comments. Uh, also, if you're putting stuff in the comments, you can let me know what you want to see me review down the line. And I will keep that in mind for my upcoming videos. Bye, guys.